it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time. <laughs> Today I am part of a YouTube hop uh, for a bunch of YouTubers that are about to hit a thousand subscribers and I decided to pull out this Honeybee stamp set in this Echo Park paper pad. I wanted to, oh and the You Goat This stamp set and dies by Honeybee Stamps. Uh, I used the Barn Builder, and um, most of the stuff is from that from the Barn Builder, except for that long piece I just picked up. That is actually from their house stamp, their build a house or house greetings or whatever it's called. The one that you build a house, that's the hinge for it, and I did use that in here. So first I thought I'd get all my stamping out of the way, stamped off all my critters I planned on using, and I stamped off my two sentiments, and... Um, one says, hey there, and the other one says, you goped this. <laughs> I thought they were fantastic. Um, and I just heat embossed those with white on some black um, embossing powder here. And I used my Scrap Perfect uh, embossing bag. I really like that. It does leave a lot of powder, and I just have to wipe it off. I just was lazy so far and didn't wipe it off. Then I did a ton of die cutting. Um, this is some heavyweight cardstock here that I use for my card bases. So it's like, what, 110 pound? And I cut out all the pieces I plan to use out of white. And then I pulled this piece of Tim Holtz paper out and cut the windmill. And then I found a scrap of yellow in my scrap bin and I cut out the hay bales and the little like tuft of hay. Did that a few times and I got all of that stuff taken care of. Then I pulled out this piece of wood grain paper from the Echo Park paper pad. That Echo Park paper pad is called America, and I needed it. I needed it. it. I haven't bought much paper lately, but I needed this one, and I recently got it. So I wanted this barn wood to be red because I live in Wisconsin, and a lot of our barns are red. We do have white barns, too, um, more up north. I think, I think something about the history that, like, white paint was really cheap at some point, so that's why the barns are white. Pretty sure I read that somewhere. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I did take some scattered straw and I did ink blend that onto these little hay bales. I have four hay bales. You will see, or you've seen in the first photo, that there were two of these cards. Um, and the reason that all the stuff was out and, and the sentiments were on the blocks is because I had filmed this already. But I had messed with my camera before I filmed it and the entire video was blurry and I had to redo it. So <laughs> I decided I wasn't going to do it exactly the same. I was going to change it up just a little bit. And uh, so that's why I knew exactly where I was going. <laughs> so after I heat or, uh, ink blended that, I decided it was time to do uh, my Copic coloring. And then I was like, well, I think I need to add a couple more animals. Now I had left all my stamps in my little mini Misty here, so it didn't matter when I added ink if I had gotten it on the butt of that goat. Uh, when I was inking up my pig and the extra little tin can that I decided to use, because everything was lined up. So then I pulled out my Copics and I did some coloring. I will leave a timestamp um, right here if you don't want to watch the coloring. There isn't all that much, but I enjoy coloring when I'm watching a video. Uh, so I will leave a timestamp so that you can skip ahead uh, to the, the building of the, the barn die, the barn scene dies. So I think that's what interest, interested me most about this die set is that I could get a little barn shaped card. And I just wanted to add a little bit of fun and this stamp set is so cute. So that's why I added this one. But I do have my markers here on the side of the screen if you are looking for what color combinations I am using. I'm not going to list them because you are able to see them each time. Now, um, on the pig, I started out with my darkest color, went to my mid-tone, then to my lightest. And I will add a little bit more shadow back in where I think it blended out just a little bit. I think this is an excellent pig color if you are coloring pigs. And this is the one you should go for right here. That RV34 is like the perfect dark shadowy pig color. I mean, I know pigs come in all sorts of colors. I live in Wisconsin, the land of the fair. Uh, but I was thinking cute little pink pig. My daughter has been running around with a little pink pig giving it kisses. And I wanted, that's, that's why there's a pig. Because she's been running around with this pig. So I wanted a little white duck. 
and I used a W1 and then I blended it completely out with the colorless blender. It does have a shadow to it, um, but he's white. And then I used this really light YR61 here for all of the orange, the chick's legs and um, beaks and the duck's legs and beaks. For the chicks, I just colored them yellow. I used a Y23 and then I went in with a darker Y19 and added a little bit of shadow. Nothing spectacular. These are just supporting characters in this card. Uh, and for me, a shaped card is kind of different. It's kind of a stretch. Um, the honeybee dies make it really easy to make shaped anything. I have their camper card die, which is super fun. It goes together really fast. I have their house builder. That's that's what it's called, house builder. It goes together really fast. Um, I also have their stocking um, and what's the other one? Oh, a gift box uh, for gift cards, both of those. And I really do like their dies a lot. They are worth the money. <laughs> I am just going to show you coloring one of the goats here. They are colored identical. I used some warm grays to do them. I wanted them to be fuzzy looking, um, but I didn't want them to be, I didn't want them to look smooth. So I think I kind of achieved that um, with the way that I colored them. I used kind of a scribbly hand. First, I shaded them, and uh, you'll see here I have a lot of the original Copics in. Um, some of these odd colors that I couldn't find when I was building my collection. I don't care color, you know, what kind of marker they are of Copic. All the ink blends together just fine. So you can see I'm kind of scribbling the edge of the ink. I'm not making sure that it's perfectly blended. There are some darker and lighter shades that's going to kind of lend itself to the kind of fuzzy nature, the nature, fuzziness, fuzzy look that I want. Uh, and then once I was done there, I decided um, I needed to color this piece to look black. This is the part that's going to be inside the loft window, uh, and it's just from the inside. And then here, I cut out another one of these parts for the windmill with white cardstock, and I'm going to color it red. A lot of the windmills that are in my area, they have like red tips on the ends of the, like, what are these, tines, blades. Um, so I wanted to create that. Uh, on this barn. I thought that would be kind of fun. So I die cut everything off screen. All of my critters that I had colored and they have um, really easy to match up um, dies. And then I trimmed off just the very edge of this shiny blade. What did I just call this? Tines? Uh, windmill blade. I think it's blade. <laughs> And I made sure that when I lined this up, that there was just a little bit of red at the end of each one. Uh, so it looked like it had the, the red blades. And I don't know. I'll have to look it up now because now I'm questioning myself. I don't know why they do that. Um, it's got to be maybe so you can see if it's spinning. I don't really know. Now I'm going to have to Google. Somebody Google and tell me in the comments below. Uh, so this is how this is going to go together. Uh, you just stick this blade on top of the stand and I wanted it to be nice and thick um, so I did add a piece of the heavyweight white cardstock behind it because that silver paper from Tim Holtz like it comes in a pad of a bunch of different colors it's not very thick it's got the um, craft on the back so here's that piece from the house builder and I uh, it's the hinge and I just measured the part where I'm gonna put this and trimmed it off it's got a nice score line in it that's that's scored while it's in the die cut machine and it's the perfect size for a hinge. So I took care of that and then I'm going to start building the barn. I have two layers of this trim for what would be kind of the overhang of the roof. And I have two of the loft windows and I'm going to stack those on top of each other. I wanted everything to be kind of chunky and thick. It's going to make things a little bit easier to put together. So I'm going to trim off this second piece of the, the hay with the, the loft window so that it's going to fit inside. The one piece I'm going to adhere to the outside of the loft window and I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to adhere this other piece inside. Now that still gives me space to adhere this black piece so now I have all of this depth in that loft window. I have what you see is inside the barn and then I have hay that goes all the way back. I die cut the fence uh, six times, so three of each, and they are a little bit different, so one's the right and left, or 
they're slightly different. You could probably just line them up and make a cute little fence on a card too. So I stack those so that they are three high. I almost, well, on the, the first one that I did, I inked the die and then it gave me some really cool detail. I didn't do that on this one because like I said, I was already, I had already filmed this once. <laughs> so I adhered my pattern paper to a piece of the heavyweight cardstock. I love that it looks like a real barn. You can see the wood through there. Uh, it's got really cool, like real wood details to it, but it's red. And then I took my two little barn doors that I'm going to use and I adhered them together with a piece of scotch removable scotch tape. Uh, scotch, scotch. How many times can I say scotch? And then I added adhesive to the backs and this just held them together so that I could line them up. And when I cut this one out of the pattern paper, I made sure that I had that center line lined up perfectly to the peak so I could um, make sure everything was, was centered on my barn. Now I'm going to uh, take a look at where I want my uh, my windmill. I wasn't sure if I wanted it in the front or the back. I decided to put it in the front. didn't want anything hanging off um, for it to look kind of weird. wasn't sure how this was actually going to sit. Um, once I was done, if it was going to sit completely flat or if it was going to kind of sit at a little bit of a canted angle or not, uh, it does sit flat. So just, you know, spoiler alert, it sits nice and flat. So I adhered these down just with some adhesive. I did not use any foam tape in this design at all. There's plenty of layers with the different layers of cardstock. So I adhered to my little duck over here by the fence and added one little chick on this side and then a little piece of grass. I thought the greenery was good, kind of grounded everything. So on the other side, I have a little chick for that side and a couple of pieces of grass, you know, outside the barn. <laughs> I just thought it was super fun and cute. And this did go together really fast. Um, die cutting the pieces took forever, but die cutting anything when you're die cutting them multiple times takes forever always. Uh, so there is the front. Oh, and the sentiment. This says, hey there. <laughs> I thought, how cute was that, right? So that's the front of the card. Now I'm going to work on the inside. Um, so I die cut these little hay bales four times and I ink them. So now I'm going to make like a little stack inside the barn. And I'm going to have this one kind of leaned up here so that our little buddy can climb up. So I adhered one goat. I did tuck the little white border that's on the bottom of the goat underneath the hay bale. The same with the tin can. So everything is kind of lined up there. Then I'm going to stand this little goat like he is going to climb up the mountain. Trim off the piece that's hanging over. And then um, <laughs> I wanted the sentiment to be on the bottom here. It says, you goat this. And I thought it really jumped right off the hay bales. I had played around with, you know, putting it up in the white spot or the white part of the, the inside of the card here. But I thought, well, this gives somebody the place to leave, you know, a really nice message, uh, lots of room to write. And then there's always the back. Now here I was like, well, maybe I should have put the pig on the front, but nope, he is inside the barn too. Everybody is having a party. And now I'm going to use some eighth inch score tape to, um, adhere this little hinge. Now, like I said, this hinge is from the house builder. You could just, um, you know, cut a piece and score it in half, and then you'd be able to, to build your own hinge. But I thought it was really nice to have this um, die because it's like pressed in there really nice. So I adhered or pulled off the, the tape, and then I put this right where I wanted it on the back. I pulled off the rest of the tape, and then I tried to line it up, but I didn't do that great of a job. <laughs> so then I had to pull it apart which wasn't that hard because I hadn't I hadn't stuck it down really well. Now I couldn't because I used that bone folder and really pressed it down. But here is my card. I'd love to know what you think. I'm going to show you pictures of both so you can see the little bit of difference. You can see the one with the windmill and one without. They both have the two ducks and the goat or in the goose or duck or whatever and the chicks. Um, the, the pig is only on the one with the little windmill. I'd love to know what you think. Thank you so much for hopping along with us today. Our goal is to reach a thousand subscribers. It's quite the milestone. I have been at this for nine months and it is my favorite, favorite thing by far, building a community here on YouTube. I want to thank Courtney Krieber for putting this together and I'd love to chat with you in the comments. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell. And as I always say, Thank you for stopping by and give cards generously. Bye.